sorry about that, babe. Recently, Vandal Hearts won a very tight pull race for my next RPG to cover. It's been in my collection for around a decade, so I'm pretty happy that we finally got around to it. It's also worth noting that there is a Japanese-only release for the Sega Saturn, which apparently did get a translation patch, but for the purpose of this review, I'll be focusing on the Sony PS1 version, which I did play in my Mr. FPGA. Vandal Hearts is a turn-based tactical slash strategy RPG that was developed and published by Konami and released on the Sony PlayStation in Japan on October 25th of 1996 and in the United States on March 27th of 1997. The Story The gist of Vandal Hearts is a story of politics, governments, uprisings, betrayals, power shifts, and a touch of the mythical. Thousands of years ago, a holy man known as Taroa the Messiah traveled across the continent of Sostagaria, spreading his teachings and religious words. Upon his passing, his descendants rose to power forming the Asha dynasty, which was a combination of religious and military powers. Over time, the citizens became resentful of the leaders due to their supreme power and unjust rulings. In steps Eris the Sage, who put together a beastly army that was able to wipe out the Asha dynasty and thus dissolve the monarchy. From the ashes rose the Republic of Ishtaria. Those behind the uprising took command, except notably Eris, who kinda disappeared. Weird, huh? Anyways, flash forward again and the Republic is now weakening, and the Minister of Defense Hell Spites has put together an anti-terrorist squad known as the Crimson Guard, who is going around and putting to rest any resistance to the Ishtarian rule. Now steps in the main character, Ash Lambert, part of the 3rd platoon of the Ishtarian security force. He and his crew do some thangs, and shortly thereafter they become a bit suspicious of the happenings that are going on within the government. And as usual, I don't like spoiling things, so from there, I'll let the rest of the story unfold. I will say this, however, the story in general is engaging and pretty easy to follow along with, which for someone like me who could become a bit lost as numerous names and plot lines get introduced, I certainly welcomed it with open arms. The story flows nicely, there's plenty of oh shit moments throughout, and you find yourself wanting to push things along story-wise post-battle. It's a very good mix of engaging, intriguing, and simplistic right up my alley. Graphics so this is something that seems to be pretty divided on the interwebs in terms of are the graphics good or are they bad? Personally, I think they're good. But I've seen plenty of naysayers pick apart things like the environments, the lack of movement in the environments, poor textures, and the backgrounds of the battles and cutscenes, which admittedly can be weird at times. Are we floating in space here or something? I don't know. But in this era of gaming, I typically do prefer higher quality 2D and or a mix of 2D slash 3D, since most of the 3D graphics did not age well from this generation. I feel like the sprites themselves get the job done and have a level of uniqueness about them. The headshots give differentiation between the characters during the cutscenes and dialogue, and in general I enjoyed the various battle animations, whether it be the magic, or slicing someone up and blood shooting all the way up into the sky, I mean, look at that, pretty sick. Also, it's worth noting that there are cutscenes in between the chapters that have that patented PS1 CG feel of a bygone era. Music and sound. As many of you know, this aspect of gaming, particularly with RPGs, is very important to me. And how does Vandal Hearts stack up? Eh. I wanted to lead off with the sound design. The sound design in this game is awesome. The sounds of the battling feel weighty and important. Heavy strikes and visceral blows fill the air. The screaming stream of magic attacks like Salamander, various effects during cutscenes like swords dropping to the ground, transformations, and even the blips on the menus, it's all top notch to me. When it comes to the soundtrack, it's not bad. I mean, the tracks that are present are well put together and help the flow of the game. Aside from the epic intro theme song, my favorite tracks are of the emotional variety dubbed Bygone Days 1, 2, and 3. But keep in mind when it comes to the soundtrack, temper your expectations a bit because you're not going to be receiving any legendary scores from this title. What you have is adequate enough, at times bordering on really good, and when you combine that with great sound design, it's a pretty good overall package. Controls with Vandal Hearts being a strategy RPG, the main chunk of your controls will be spent on the battlefield and in menus. And thankfully, they're pretty good. I find navigation of said menus to be fluid and responsive. Very rarely would I find myself doing a misclick, and if I did, you could easily back out of whatever that may be. And on the battlefield, it's all pretty responsive and intuitive in terms of where you want to move, what actions you want to perform, ending turns, and so forth. You also have the ability for various camera options. Touching back on a vault review, one of my gripes with Shining Force 3 at times were some issues that I had with the camera. 
various issues with positioning and obscuration. Vandal Hearts allows for a far out, middle and close up zoom of the battlefield, as well as a dynamic camera following the action or a fixed camera. For the most part I played the game with the middle slash normal zoom option and a fixed camera. I felt the dynamic camera was a little bit too wonky, and the fixed camera was a bit more stable, though at times things can be obscured with it. And for further viewing pleasure, you could access the map of the battles with blue slash red markers signifying your squad and the enemies that are still conscious on the battlefield. So, needless to say, Vandal Hearts does its best at trying to give you many options to see your strategies play out. Gameplay and Fun Factor Let's get right to it. The Battle System and Objectives the majority of the battles wind down to keep Ash alive and destroy all the enemies, with the occasional boss battle or objective-based mission such as an escort. On your turn during battle, you have the ability to move your characters where you please within their limits, use items, search the grounds, check the character's stats, mess with the map, interact with objects, attack the enemies, or stand pat. The enemies then go and essentially have the same routine, but obviously controlled by the computer. Some basic battleground tips which you do receive from the dojo in town, we'll touch more on that later, are as follows. Arrows work great against flying creatures and mages. Magic works wonders against heavily armored enemies. And swordsmen slay archers with ease. You can kind of view this as a rock, paper, scissor mechanic, and keeping this in mind will take you very far. Another thing to note are elevations and positioning. Basic rules apply here such as the higher ground and attacking from behind performs much better than attacking straight on. Also, attacking near your partners provides support synergy similar to other strategy RPGs. Vandal Hearts has a counterattack mechanic built in. Basically, if you melee and don't kill the enemy and vice versa, a counterattack will ensue. The only times that counters don't happen, aside from death, are when attacking non-archers from range, or an archer who doesn't have a clear line of sight to counter. This is a very important mechanic, because if you go in all willy-nilly, you can get countered and then killed on the next enemy turn. Obviously the fight becomes tougher with one less warrior on your squad, but you also lose money for each party member that died in battle. Being able to wipe out the opponents and not die nets you the most gold gain after battles to use in the town shops. It's also worth mentioning that there are no real avenues to grind in Vandal Hearts. You cannot repeat battles, there are no training type areas, what you do in the battles that ensue is paramount. So in order to get certain people up to speed, make sure they are doing the lion's share of the action, whether it be attacking and killing or even using healing spells or items, which also gives you experience. Set experience leads your characters to leveling up, which increases their stats, and eventually when reaching level 10 and level 20, promotions are available for your characters at the dojo in the towns. The knight characters start out as soldiers and at level 10 could be promoted to swordsman, and at level 20 be promoted as a duelist, or they can go down the armored path of guardsman at 10 and dragoon at 20. Continuing on, the archers could be promoted to bowman at 10 and sniper at 20, or they could take the Airman route with the class of Hawk Knight at level 10 and Skylord at level 20. The Mages are pretty straightforward, becoming a Sorcerer at level 10 and Enchanter at level 20, while the Priests start out as Healers and could become a Bishop at level 10 or Archbishop at level 20, or go to the Monk class at level 10 and Ninja at level 20. These classes all have their strengths and weaknesses and present some level of decision making within the game. Now, let's talk about what occurs after the battle. You are usually treated to a well thought out cutscene advancing the story between skirmishes. The dialogue and translation were pretty smooth, entertaining and everything was conveyed well enough. After the cutscenes are over, you are either teleported directly into another battle, which by the way, you can do in battle saves so don't fret if you are put into a battle right away and you have to stop playing, Vandal Hearts has you covered there, and clearly with this mechanic you could also save scum if you wish to have a 100% run. Anyway, or you can end up on the map screen or in a town. Basically, the map screen serves as a way to do general character overviews, options, and item management while choosing your next destination or returning to a previous town. And while in the towns, you have the same abilities, but you also have the dojo, tavern, and shop. The shop is pretty straightforward. You could buy weapons, armor, and items, as well as sell your own weapons, armor, and items to get more gold. Much like the promotion branches, this is one of the other instances in the game of decision making. Should you drop that money on a piece of armor or a heavy duty healing item? The choice is yours. The taverns aren't robust, but still pretty neat. You can go in and talk to the patrons who give their own insights, lore, and advancements on plot points. Sometimes, return trips after certain battles can also yield new dialogue. Not only that, but some of these patrons play into the game's secrets which I will touch on later. Lastly, the dojo as mentioned is a place to receive advice and tips, advance your characters via promotions, or carry out the game's main secret path. One of the ways to 100%ing Vandal Hearts is to loot the battle maps of visible and hidden items. Some of these hidden items are literally the keys to the Trials of Taroa, 
or the items go towards netting you a key to the Trials of Taroa. Touching on these keys, basically if you go into a dojo with one of the keys in Ash's inventory and you try to leave, you will be asked to undergo a trial. There are six keys and six trials in total, and if completed, Ash will receive his secret promotion class of Vandalier, which is above that of the level 10 champion and level 20 paragon promotions. Again, aside from the trials of Taroa, secret items on the battlefields, purposely trying to 100% battles and not die in promotion branches, Vandal Hearts is a very straightforward, tight and concise game. In a way, I would dub it the strategy RPG for everybody. You battle, you story, you town, you do some moderate choosing and management, writs and repeat. Overall, it's a very fun and digestible game, but it's not without its flaws. Critiques My biggest issue with Vandal Hearts is the lack of variety and replay value. Much like the case of something like Shining Force Gaiden or CD, there is no overworld or true town exploration. The game becomes very routine, and I do like the deviation of said overworld and town exploration to spice things up a bit. Like I touched on earlier, you are unable to revisit battles, which essentially makes you unable to grind. Aside from promotion choices and buying weapons, items, and armor, there's really not much in the way of decision making and branching paths. And even the weapons, armor, and items purchasing isn't much of a choice as money is extremely abundant throughout most of the game, aside from maybe the final chapter. Heck, even the promotion branches aren't much of a choice. I actually found that it wasn't too important to have much variety between said promotion classes. For example, I turned Sarah into a monk slash ninja and honestly, she was just okay. I probably would have been better off just keeping her on the bishop trajectory as I did with Huxley, who pretty much became an MVP in my squad, while Sarah, as a monk, with, you know, obviously having higher attack and good range, but lagging behind in the spells, kind of fell off as the game went on. I also did not even choose a heavily armored class path for any of my swordsmen, and I didn't miss a beat. Which then brings me to my next point. The difficulty of Vandal Hearts is... average, bordering on too easy at times. Sure, if you want to 100% each and every battle, that's a different story. And by that, of course, I mean obtaining every item, slaying every enemy, and suffering no losses from your own party. But in general, the difficulty is lacking throughout the entirety of the game, sans a few battles, and it's extremely lacking in the final chapter of the game, which was a bit of a disappointment to me. I think the major issue is that the mage classes just become too OP as the game goes on. Spells like Roman Fire and Salamander just completely tilt the battles in your favor the further you go along. And if you went the extra mile with the Trials of Taroa, Ash's Vandalier class is even more broken, having basically every spell in the game, including one that could hit the entire enemy group in that a plasma wave. Sure, you could do some self-imposed challenges like not using spells, not promoting, or whatever, but if you play the game the way that the developers intended, it's a little broken at times and somewhat easy. And again, I want to state that it still would have been easy, even without the Vandalier class. While I do find the story and dialogue to be well thought out, well paced, and entertaining, on the flip side I found the character development to be extremely lacking. Quite frankly, I didn't really care about any of the characters in the entire game, aside from maybe Grog, who had a kind of interesting story and introduction. Sure, there are some sad moments, there's betrayals and the like, but if I don't truly connect with the characters, then it doesn't hit as hard as it should. This also may be in part due to the game's length, it's not an extremely long RPG, and thus there's less opportunities to build deeper connections. I also found that while the soundtrack was well put together, it was a bit repetitive and lacking on the grand scale of it all. Most of the same tunes you will hear over and over and over, and again, while good, it does become a bit old. I would have liked more variety and perhaps a few longer, more magnum opus-y type tracks, but oh well. One thing that I would love to see more of in Vandal Hearts are more choices when it comes to weapons and armor. The upgrades that are present are very straightforward, as well as few and far between. There's a long stretch of nothing. Basically everyone has the same gear for quite a while. And while there were some lootable weapons and armors from the battles, I would have loved to see more of like a rare drop type system to encourage some replay value. Just a little bit more variety would have served this game better. Again, for someone like me, it's not that bad, but for seasoned strategy RPG veterans, they might be turned off by its simplicity. One last thing, this is very minor, but there were a few annoying gimmick fights. Now, I realize in strategy RPGs you do need these for variety, but I felt like they could have been done better. There were a few gotcha type fights where unless you had prior knowledge, there's almost no way you could have predicted whatever played out to have happened. For someone like me on limited time schedule, it's kind of annoying to have to reload battles because of that. Thankfully, I found that the worst defenders of these are in the Trials of Taroa battles, and those are completely optional and basically secret, so I can't hate on those too much. In summation, Vandal Hearts is a very straightforward game. You get what you see. And for that, I appreciate it. It's well presented, with a fun battle system, a good story, decent graphics and soundtrack, 
great sound, and good controls. Hampered by a mediocre difficulty, lack of options and branching paths, lack of an overworld and true exploration element, and a lack of replay value. Overall, I give Vandal Hearts on the PS1A 7.5 out of 10. I do think Vandal Hearts is worth a try if you haven't played it already, but for RPG fans that prefer more complexity to their games, you might want to skip this one. If you've enjoyed my review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to check out more Vandal Hearts and RPG coverage, check out the description and pinned comment below, my end screen, or my main channel. Take care.